I'm going to start out this morning with supplies. Uh, we're using the Zeta series sketchbook and a heavy, extra heavy weight paper. It's a natural white smooth paper, so it won't work well for pastel. Pastel will just fall off. So I've prepared the pages with uh, acrylic paint that is close to the same color as Barrett Morisot used. And I am, I added a layer of acrylic pastel ground by Golden. So it has a very rough sandpaper finish to it. I did not finish it out to the edge since this is a more painterly type of sketch. Um, I just wanted that sort of in process look and a vignetted look. I am using uh, vine charcoal. I have a medium sized piece. I typically like the little thin pieces. You can also use, if you're uncomfortable holding that small piece, they have charcoal holders. Um, I'll probably use pastel since that's what it looks like. I don't see any evidence of charcoal in this, so I'll probably use the pastel. Mm. Uh, I've used three colors that um, I learned from Daniel Green, 223, 253, and 283. Now, I, I could only find the two colors because my new pastel set is about had it. The colors are worn off. But basically, you want a light brown, a medium brown, and a dark brown so that you can different drawings, so that you can do three different drawings. 283 is the lightest, moving to a two, 253, and then finally to a 223 if you're using a new pastel set. If not, just use your three browns. Uh, and work in a very light manner. The pencils are also okay to use. They're a little harder, so they don't move around the pages and aren't as easily erased. So I'm going to start off with a new pastel. If you have a set of new pastels and you want to sharpen them with a single edge razor blade, might make it a little easier to draw with. I also have a tri-tip eraser and a blending stump, but I probably will not use that. Um, I have my little small mono zero eraser as well and that may be useful if you have any details that you want to get in there and and carve so out. So the next thing is I've adjusted my workspace so that you can see my sketchbook is about the same level as my reference. If you're using a printed photo you can use a clip or um, another easel to get your photo up eye level with your surface. If you were working from life, you would position your easel in such a way that you could see your surface, your canvas, and your model at the same time, however you needed to turn your easel to, to make that work. That way your eyes are flicking back and forth quickly from model to surface. I have also got a blank page, so I'm going to be using that to do a quick rough draft this morning. Really, I only want to take about three minutes to lay a quick gesture drawing in. Okay, I've repositioned my uh, sketchbook so that I just have the rough draft page and I have the color image. It's a very cloudy day today and I like to record in the morning so that I have good lighting out here in the studio, but um, it's a little challenging today. But we're not doing color, so it should be okay. And I wanted to show you how I use the preview app on a Mac. It is the preview um, program that opens up your images. If you're using um, a PC or your iPhone, you have a default app that you can open to do some editing on your pictures. On preview, there's a little marker right here, and you have options for marking on this. I go over to the little mountains, look like a landscape, and it gives me a, a, a just color option and I just simply go down to saturation and slide it over to remove all the saturation. I like to work from a black and white photo when I'm drawing so that I can see the values and the drawing and the color is out of the way. That's, <clears throat> that's what I do um, when I begin a painting is I like to grayscale it. I will take it into Photoshop later and um, show you when we get on into the, uh, the drawing that I put a poster edges filter on it to break it down into values. Her face looks just 
like almost all one value. She's got a little bit of shadow here, a little bit of shadow here. So the values on this are going to be a, a little bit of a challenge, but it will be mostly drawing for accuracy. So that's what we're going to focus on this morning. I'm going to go ahead and make um, a mark on my page with, I'm going to stabilize my, my um, easel first. That's an important part of working. I am on a table with several monitors here. So, and I've got my sketchbook attached so that it's not moving around on me. And again, I have it eye level. So um, a life-size head for an adult, the face is typically from your middle finger to your thumb. So you know a child's head's gonna be somewhat smaller and heads have a way of growing. So I'm just gonna make it a little under life size. Again, this would be life size for the face of an adult. So I'm gonna bring it in and make it a bit smaller. I wanna leave a little room for the collar and that's about all I'm gonna do. Um, typically I measure everything out, but I want us to just do this exercise first by just drawing it without any measurements or proportions of length quick gestures overall she has sort of a round head so i'm going to go ahead and just barely get my hand going in centrifugal motion and do a bit of that um, i am in the habit of of getting the the tilt down and i do see that she has a tilt it's not straight on so watch that even as you're doing your quick rough, rough draft <clears throat> I, I can't help it i have to measure I can't not do it without measuring, but I do know, and I'll go over this in a minute, that these two segments are about the same. So I want to make sure that's right, even for my rough draft. So I've eyeballed it about, about uh, accurately. Halfway mark is the top of her eyelid. So... I'll check that real quickly, and you see how how far off I am, halfway mark. If this is the bottom of her head, I mean her chin, then my eyelids are going to be way down here. Wow. Is that off or what? Halfway mark is eyelids. <clears throat> so even on a rough draft, you can get off to a really bad start if you just go by your by your eyeball. So let me regroup a bit. Halfway, halfway. Eyelids, eyelids. Eyebrows, eyebrows. Then this segment from eyebrows to nose and nose to chin is divided in half. And I've already gotten a little large. So see how doing a quick rough draft can help you um, make a bad start keep you from not making a bad start I've already got that circle for her nose right there which is throwing me off I can see more of this side of her face than I do so I'm already pre conditioned to put the eyes right in the center of the head so again I'm learning something before I even get anything done Okay, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the layout of this face. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense to lay some things out in the beginning. I usually like to start with a halfway mark, and your brain is going to put a halfway mark in straight. Uh, but I did that to start with from the widest part of her, where her hair goes. I'm not thinking about the bow because that's easy to uh, pop on to the widest part on the right. And I used the same size line here to see how she compares width to height. So you can see that the very center, and when you use these, let me show you on this one. When you use these marks from the preview app, it automatically gives you a little green T 
tab to show you where the center is. So it was easy for me to take this vertical line and move it over exactly center. So if I wanted to at the very beginning, I could draw a line like this and it would show me how far down this right eye is from halfway. A child's features will always be in the, in the lower third of the face, typically. The younger they are, the further down on the head it is. It's not necessarily in the third, but if you can think about it that way and remind yourself, they will always look much older if you put the features too high up on the head. You can see that the top, if we turn this at an angle, which is what I like to do to get that tilt, I'll put a cross in to start, is I find the halfway mark, the center of the face. I use this line to gauge the tilt of the head from the top of the lash line or the eyelids, if you can see those. And then I put a line perpendicular to that straight down the middle of the uh, glabella, the tip of the nose, the fulcrum under the nose and above the lip down to the chin. And that helps me if I put that cross in. Now, uh, the next thing I do, which is kind of confusing sometimes because I had that halfway mark in there, but not thinking about where the halfway mark is now, I want to divide the face into thirds because getting a likeness has more to do with these proportions of length than drawing these features perfectly. If you draw the eyes and the nose and the lips perfectly, but they're not in the right place, it will never look like the person. So I spend a few minutes before every portrait figuring out the proportions of the face. And this comes from Daniel Green's teaching, um, excellent draftsman, and it works every time. It will not lie to you. So um, it's easiest to see the brow line. So I put that in first with the tilt. Under the nose is the next proportion and the bottom of the chin and the hairline. It's easy to add this hair on at the top. If, if it's easier for you, you can just from the get-go divide the face into four proportions. Uh, but I'm most concerned about the face right now, and I could add the hair on later. So I can tell by looking at these two sections that they're almost equal. And I always keep a skewer or a paintbrush, a thin paintbrush in my hand to measure with. So from the chin to the nostril is the same as from the bottom of the nostril to the low spot on the brow right here. Or not the lowest spot, but right here the the median spot on the brow. Now you can, if it works better for you, you can measure from the top of the nostril, whatever works and, and helps you remember that these two are equal. This is the shortest proportion from her hairline and you can move that up or down a little bit. It doesn't matter, but just so that you remember the hairline to the brows is the shortest and it is about uh, two thirds of this, these other two segments. Uh, spending a little time on the, at the beginning mapping out these proportions is, is the most important thing you can do for this drawing. Once I drew these proportions in, you can use a, a, a printed photograph with a plastic rec report cover over it to just draw these partitions or uh, these proportions in with a dry erase marker. Uh, whatever works for you, but this is this is the way that I can get a likeness and it, it works for me every time. I like to screenshot. Uh, it's hard to save these with these lines. I'm not sure if I'm able to do that. So I'll just take a screenshot. You can see that I've done a couple of different things here that I'm going to use to correct and, and um, critique myself later on. Uh, if these bother you, just use the, the photograph and draw it and then we can check it according to these proportions of length. But I'm going to be using this one, and again, I'm going to get it as close to my drawing as I can to my surface so that I can uh, easily look back and forth between the two. All right, I am going to be using, instead of charcoal, I'm going to be using this number 283 New Pastel. It is the lighter brown. And I'm going to be using a really, really light touch because I have this uh, golden ac acrylic ground that has pumice or some kind of grit material in it. So it's like sandpaper, and I'm not sure how easily it's going to erase. So I'm going to be using a very, very light touch for the first uh, marks that I make on the page. 
Again, a life-size head for an adult is from the thumb to the middle finger. So you know a child is going to be smaller. And I want to think about just the size of her face on here. So I'm going to make my marks where her uh, hairline would go and the bottom of her chin right now. And then I'm going to divide this section into thirds. And that's where people get confused. So if you're looking at a smaller picture and you're trying to make a larger painting from a smaller picture, you simply decide how large you want the head to be. And then you have to divide the face from the hairline to the chin into three segments. And so the two bottom segments need to be equal in this case. And the forehead needs to be about two thirds. So the first mark. Okay, so I came back a little bit later. Uh, sometimes there's just too many obstacles and you need a break. So I had some lunch and did a few things and the sun has come out. So my lighting is a little better. And <clears throat> I want to start with the hairline and the chin. And I want to go ahead and just make a few marks on here to determine how large I want this to be. Now I know that hairline and chin is about the same, or midsection of the head is about the same as the width. So I want to go ahead and kind of establish a little bit of that to make sure. See, look, I'm going to be really wide here, and I'm going to run off. So I can tell automatically that I need to make it a little bit smaller. Height to width is always a good thing to check. Uh, I do have that. I sent that image to you guys, I believe, that's just this height to width from the middle of her hairline is the same as the width right through the top of her her eyes a little bit it's a little bit smaller than that say so there to there is the same as chin to middle of the hair um, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit let's see don't want to bring it down or bring it up. I want to leave room for her hair down here. So let me just take it up. I'm going to guess where the top of the head would be. Here is about where her part would be. So I'm going to say here to here, just to make sure that I have enough room for the bow and her hair to come out over here. Maybe even a little smaller here to here because I want that hair to come out on the bottom over here. So make a place, spend a little bit of time, however it works for you to do that, make a place so that you know that you have enough room. And height to width is always a great way to check that. If you want to go all the way to the edge of the bow, it's the same almost to the top of her head. Let's go, all the, let's see what that is. From the top of her head to her chin and just beyond the bow. So we can come over here and make sure we can fit it. See, that's going to put the bow way over here because I want to leave room for this hair to bump out on the side because that's really pretty with her. And if it runs off, it's going to lose some of that, that rhythm there. Again, this is confusing sometimes and it's, it takes time to do, but it's so worth it if you can just make a place on there first. So let me come over here again, height to width. I want to make sure I can fit her and leave room for the collar and her hair and leave room for the bow and some of her hair to come out. So this is a good size right here. Now I've got hairline, chin, and I want to divide from the hairline to the chin into three sections. We already determined that from the brows to the no bottom of the nostril and bottom of nostril to the chin, actually, sorry, brow to the nostril, nostril to the chin are the same. And this one is about two thirds. So I'm gonna make a guess very lightly. This is about two thirds and here's a halfway mark. So let me check it. Nostril to chin, nostril to eyebrow, and about two thirds. 
See, that was two marks. That's all it was, two marks to divide this space up. Getting those two marks is essential. Um, now I want to determine tilt because my brain is going to make this straight. If I do not put a tilt in there, my brain will continue to make this straight. If you have trouble with the tilt, and I know I've had several people ask me how to make sure I get the tilt right, get yourself a long wooden dowel. If, you know, if this is the only thing that will work for you, and, and hold it up and make sure that you have it parallel. And then draw yourself a really light line on here that can be erased to make sure you get that tilt right. And then the nose will be at a tilt. And her hairline will be at a tilt. Now, I can also check a couple of other things before I go too much farther. I, I can put this large stick down. I can check my height to width again and give myself some little marks here so that I don't make the face too skinny. I don't make the eyes too far over here or too far over there. So I'm going to do the whole entire width from the bow to the side of her head is the same as chin to almost the top. So chin to almost the top and side of the bow, which runs right along the eyebrows if this is the right area and it is, to here. So I can decide how much space do I need. I want to come out over here. All right, I'm going to come all the way over here. And that's my width. It's my width from here to here. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is just start drawing. Uh, I could go ahead and put the tilt in here, straight down the middle section. Um, let me go ahead, since I have this, and draw another line. So this little program gives me a line and then lets me tilt it as I need to. All right. And let's see. Believe it or not, the center line for this right down the middle of her nose and fulcrum and between her lips is exactly halfway between the bow so all I have to do now is, there's so many things you can check. And just make this your habit. It just, it's so much more fun when all the puzzle pieces come together. So I know now that that is straight down through the center. Now your brain is gonna wanna make you do the, the features over here and straight. So, and if you do it this wide, you're gonna end up with the, with the face way over here because you're gonna forget about this bow. <clears throat> But halfway mark is smack dab in the middle between her nose and eyes, the glabella. So right about here. If you want to keep a little T-square or something with you, you can. And you can draw that line straight down the center. Do it very lightly. Just to remind yourself that that's where you're going. You may want to check your surface and do a little test over to the side and see how easily things erase. But remember, we are going to put some pastel over this, so it will be easy to watch. It erases pretty well, or to put some pastel over, the, over that. I do not have a, um, a very good drawing tip, so I may switch to my lightest. These are my three pastel pencils. One is light, one is medium, one is dark. So I may switch to these to draw with. Let's see how that works. I think I'm more comfortable with the pastel. All right, so now that I have those proportions of length, I'm gonna to switch to this, this uh, drawing right here, this image here. And I'm gonna leave this one up as well. And you have to know whether the brows come uh, a little bit under a little bit under here, if that's your measurement. That's why drawing these plumb lines is, is helpful. And then I move down the face as if a window shade was being pulled down. I make a mark for the eyelid, for the lash line, the bottom of the eye, 
Come over here and do the same thing, top of the eyebrow. I don't know how wide they are yet. I'll, I'll check that in just a minute. A note for the eyelid, the lash line, the bottom of the eye. I'm looking every time I make a mark. I already know that this is the bottom of the nose under the nostrils. And I can, I know this is the center where the fulcrum or the, the little uh, Cupid's bow on the lip would be. So I can make a mark for the top of the lip, the opening of the mouth, and the fullness of that bottom lip. And there's a bit of a shadow underneath it. And then the bottom of her chin. So I already have a little ghost of a person on there. Now I have to decide how close together these eyes go. And once I get the eyes drawn, I can use a plumb line to see what intersects down the face with those. This becomes second nature. It doesn't always kick your butt. So, so bear with me. It will be easier for you as you do it. Uh, let me check a couple of things with the eyes. Typically, these eye, the eyes are the same width as the socket. Because remember, this is a... I'll come back over here. This is a hole in the skull that comes down to about right there. And usually you can see a little indention under the eyes if you're looking at a person in life, even a baby. And so they're usually the same width as from the brow ridge to the under eye socket. And I can check to see a some faces there are exactly five eyes across the front view of a face. So there's one on the right side of her eye, two, a little less than an eye width between her eyes. There's an eye width and a half of an eye width on that side. So I can come over here and, because I know this is my bow, that's the hair, I can go ahead and place I can move from the inside out and make a small mark here for this indention by her nose and then the corner of her eye, the width of her eye. Same over here. I can check the width of her eye with the socket and that's about the same. There's a little bit less than an eye width here. And I can move slowly across with this center line as well, putting this indention and then the tear duct next to that. And then the width of the eye. And the eyes are almost always the same width. Sometimes a person will have a larger eye on one side. That's rare, but it can happen. All right, so here's an eye width. A little less than an eye width in between the two. If this makes you crazy, just go ahead and draw it like you want to, and then I'll help you check it. We'll help with corrections. Here's the eye width, and we have another eye width here, which leaves just about enough room for the side of her hair right here. So as you move slowly from the center out, making small increments, small judgments um, of length, you're going to come out with a much better drawing. Um, a much more accurate drawing. Now I've got my center line here so I can see how it intersects with this with the nose. Here's the bottom of the nose and I can see that just a little over is the nostril. Here it's tiny and there's the wing flare of the nostril. Um, I can check that if I hold a straight line up, it comes just over the tear duct. If I hold it at an angle, perpendicular, it comes um, directly even with the tear duct. So you just have to make up your mind. Do you want to use straight plums or do you want to go along? If you have a strong line drawn for your tilt, you can use that line as well. Just make this work. Adopt it for yourself and make it work, whatever, whatever feels better to you. There's a nostril and on this side, and I like to put a little circle on the tip of the nose. That helps me here. It looks like I have this a little too squished, so I can double check that as we go. From the lid to the bottom of the nose, 
is the same as from iris to iris. So let me get those irises drawn in and I can check that. When you work on an eye, it's really easy to just make a almond shape and her eyes are very almond shaped but resist the urge make yourself look at every change of angle as you move around the perimeter of this eye she has a heavy lash line and her brows come down you can really see the socket here over here up the high point on her, on her lid is right here, uh, just to the right of the pupil. And then it goes fairly straight over. And I look at, when I'm doing the irises, I, I use the negative space around the iris. I make sure that I have that sized properly. You don't see much on the right here because there's a, a harsh, sharp uh, lash line there wraps around underneath all right stay with me now doing portraits is challenging and they do go through um, a yucky stage where they don't really look like anything they don't look like the person I don't want to misjudge that because she's really wide right through here. I remember that from my rough draft. So let me go ahead and take that off before I start making that same mistake. If you feel more comfortable, let's see what happens with the part, with the charcoal. Actually, the charcoal is working pretty good, so I may go ahead and switch to charcoal. I have this brow too wide already. Heads have a way of getting larger as you go, so be, be aware of that. little flip up here sometimes when you first put these nostrils in they look like little piggy noses so there's lots of work to do to to get those correct now I can use a plumb line again to see where the side of the mouth is and it comes if I'm using a straight line it comes just inside the iris if I'm going perpendicular to the uh, middle line it comes right about halfway here about halfway uh, between the eye white right here so that brings it over just a tad or uh, side of mouth plumb with the side of iris straight down. On this side, the side of the mouth plum is just inside of the tear duct. If I go along the center tilt, it is just down from the side of the iris right here. <clears throat> I hope that's not confusing you, but either way, you can either go with this center line or you can use a plumb line straight up and down. Just whatever is easiest for you. I like to show the little trick for the lips and I like to draw the three circles. I'll put a little extra image up here so you can see that example. This two circles for the fullness of the bottom lip. A long skinny oval on this top lip and then the little Cupid's bow in the middle shadow underneath the mouth all right now I'm going to just come around the perimeter of the face and children are soft and round but I'm still going to start out being fairly angular so you've got this mark this mark this mark this mark here, here, and you can see her broken strokes as she drew. I'm, I'm keeping in mind the edge of this brow and how much distance there is here. 
but that's a pretty strong line right there that you can put in with with confidence the more confident you are that your drawing is correct the more uh, you can lay down bolder strokes but start really light so you don't lock yourself in and I think you'll be happier with it um, the eyebrow wraps around the socket here so you can see and judge how close the hair needs to be right here sometimes I go ahead and mask that in so I can pay attention to where I am um, it goes out a little beyond the eye here so I may have misjudged that a little you can use your small eraser here maybe this tri-tip is a, the workhorse that I like the most it's pretty dirty but it's a general's tri-tip eraser there we go side of her face I can see how much room there is here and this angle goes this way not in like your brain wants to do it goes out it's at its widest point right here just under the socket and it starts to come back in out and in that's important don't go in too much if you're not sure as you're moving around the perimeter of this face it changes angle again right here under her lip so the widest point is here and then it starts to come in under the lip there's another change of angle right here you can almost see a circle in this chin and I like to put that in sometimes it helps me now I may have it too far to the and I think I do Let's see if I can draw a circle with this program. All right, so you can kind of see that over to the side. The, the circle needs to be to keep this chin, because see my brain is trying to straighten everything back up. You know how we do. So let me come back in here. Bring that circle half and half. Circles help so much with children because we tend to want to make them. And see, I maybe have my, I maybe don't have my tilt enough. That tilt is, is challenging to get it just right. So keeping my center line. Here's my center line. And then you see how this begins to come up and over. All right, then I can check the neck to see uh, plum. It comes straight down from her iris. Here. on this side it's right along her ear and it's kind of hard to tell let's see just outside the if you use a straight line it's just outside the brow right here so how do you check then you check the width so from here to the uh, edge of the neck that I can see is the same as her eyebrow to the bottom of her mouth. See, I don't have it wide enough, so what do I have to adjust here? Eyebrow to bottom of mouth. Needs to be farther over. There we go, that's closer. Still a little bit narrow. You see how easy it is to misjudge these distances? And you end up with somebody that looks sort of like their cousin, but it's not them. 
All right, uh, I can check to where to place the ear and I'm gonna use a horizontal plum and it goes just over from her nostril. And on this side, the ear, because she's got a tilted head, is even with the top of her lip. I can check the distance from her nose to her ear. And that is the same as one of the thirds, exactly. To the front of her ear. Let me see if I have my marks the same here. I do. I ended up with my picture being exactly the same size. So again, the lower third is the same as from the nostril to the side of the face. And you have to make sure the nostril is in the right place as well. I mean, the uh, side of the nostril is in the right place. If your nose is too wide, it will automatically look too short. So those are some things you can check um, to make sure you don't get it too wide. Make sure you get it the right uh, distance. On this side, to the ear to the nostril, from the ear to the nostril is the same as from about the pupil to the nostril. So that's about right, right there, close. Now what really makes it look more like her, again, it are these dark notes for the hair. And again, you can check the width here if you wanted to. From the bottom of the ear on the shadow to the edge of the hair is the same as an eye width. So bottom of the ear to the edge of the hair is the same as an eye width. I like to go ahead and mask these areas in where they're dark. It just helps anchor things. The hair comes all the way straight down from her pupil here. So I judge that about right. You can see about this much of her neck. You want to do these rhythmically. You don't want to be too angular with these strokes of hair. This angle is really sharp and it comes in and dissects her cheek here. Uh, we already measured from the bottom of her chin to her collar is the same as a little bit shorter than her forehead. So about right here. That seems too long. Let me double check it. Chin to collar is the same as eye width. Yeah, so it goes up just a bit. Thought so. All right, um, and then I can see this line here. Collar comes around. I can see this negative space here. Uh, her ear moving from the inside out. Her ear, the top of her ear, and the bow comes right along her lash line. Again, I'm just going very lightly with these, this massing in. This little dark area is a nice anchor point. And if you check it with your tilt, it comes right through the middle. The bottom of it comes right through the middle of her eyes. So that's about right. Then it goes out. The angle goes this way, then up, up. Then right here is where it changes direction again. So watch for those things. So here, a little bit bumped up there, goes down for her part.
I still feel like I have her too straight. So that's going to be a, uh, a caution for you guys as you work on this, is to not get this thing too straight, but to keep your tilt. I like to erase out that circle because that bothers me. And her, her lashes and eyes are really heavy. This sandpaper is a little bit of a challenge to, to work with as well. So you can see an angle here, there, and there. It's like stair steps. So over, down, over, over, down. Again, once you start to feel a little more confident in your strokes, you can go a little darker. This is too, this feels too wide. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and get away from it and reassess. Okay, I've looked at it a little little more and I am going to go back and refine the drawing a little bit. I think I would have been happier with this stage if I'd used the vine charcoal. Uh, this is the pastel going over this really coarse sandpaper is um, it's not real gratifying but let me um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a few corrections. I, my tilt has gotten off and I want to show you how I check that. I want to make sure that my page is pretty close. So here is the angle and here's the angle for the eyes. It's not too far off. I think I can emphasize it a little bit more but that's going to be something you're going to want to keep an eye out for the whole time. So I'm moving to the medium brown now and I will use a mall stick so that I won't be laying in it. And let me make sure, yep, uh, I'm going to just use the, I'm going to move these marks and I'm going to use the, the grayscale image to just come back in here and redraw a little bit and refine. At this stage, if I'm pretty sure that I have my measurements right, you could go ahead and erase out the cross. And my mono zero eraser is not working real good on this. Let's see. So I've got her upper lip a little too thick. And I think at this stage you could use a little tortillon to blend with or one of the little blending tips that I use that's nylon is uh, probably going to get torn up by the sandpaper, the roughness of the sandpaper. So I probably won't use those. But as I'm working, I always look before I make a mark. I do not make any marks without looking at my subject. I think that's really important because you start to make things up if you don't constantly pay attention to what you're doing. Now, as I'm looking, I'm noting that the bottom, the whole bottom of the iris is cut off here. So I, I have it totally round, which gives her a more wide open look. Will also give me a little bit more space here where it looks a little squashed. So I'm going to bump that up and then note how the um, the bottom of the lid kind of goes down here. This one goes up at this angle. Gives her a little bit more of a squinty-eyed look. The quality of the line is very light right here. And my eraser's not erasing too well for this. So, get in here and use my little tri-tip. Works great. 
She has a really beautiful lash line and a sultry look to her eyes. So that's part of what I want to capture and getting a likeness of her. So I'm starting to feel a little bit better as I'm starting to refine it. So whatever you have to do to make this, to kind of soothe yourself as you go, because this, this stuff is hard. I'm gonna go ahead and take this whole nostril off because I have it wrong. But I know where the edge of it should be. And I'm using the pencil here because it gives me a little bit more control. This whole segment is in shadow, her fulcrum. And I may have a little too much space right here. So how easy is that to fix? Well, we just bump the mouth up a tiny bit. Or do we bump the nose down? Let's check it. Eyebrow to bottom of nose. Eyebrow to bottom of nose, bottom of nose to chin. I think I can bump the nose down a tiny bit too. So even though you measure, it's nothing is foolproof. You do as you draw and put these big wide lines in with the pastel. It's easy to to go over your drawing line. So I'm going to pull the side of the nose down just a bit. Check the width of this nose. It is almost the width of an eye. So that's about right. Bringing it down, bringing the nostril down. Looking at the shadow. Remember in the center line here, I'm glad I didn't take the center line off yet. Upper lip, bottom of lip. Remember the tilt, because your brain's going to want to make the mouth straight. Look, I even put those lines straight across, but remember they should go this way. Along the same tilt as the eyebrows, bottom of the nose. Nostril here. Not much on this side to help you with the nose. It's pretty flat right there. And you really don't see the top of the button of her nose either. Remember those two circles in the bottom lip. And then look for places where it's melty. It's kind of melty down here. There is a shadow along her um, cheek right here. Let me double check the side from her mouth to the widest part of her cheek is an eye width. And there's a light spot right beside her mouth. And if you, if you need to use some white <clears throat> right now to help you, you can do that. I think it's helpful sometimes to, to be able to identify your lightest light and your darkest dark. Now you can start to go a little bit darker with your shading and develop some of your values. Darkest dark, medium tone, medium light, lightest light. Four values, probably. You could keep it simple with four values.
very light line here, but this is all shadowed. The middle tone. This is a middle tone. Pretty heavy lash line. And again, it's it's really soft down here. You can see almost the bottom of the iris, but it's it's almost a lost edge right there, just a real sketchy edge. And a lot of times when you work on these, if they're dark eyed people, they don't look right until you darken the eyes up. Note, it, note the corners of the mouth, if there's any lift, and there's a lift here, and there's a little line that goes downward right there. From the corner of her mouth, again, we can check it. It is plum just inside of her tear duct, so that's about right. From the corner of the mouth to her, the side of her neck is the same as her lash line to her nostril. Bottom of her ear comes right along the top of her mouth. So I had that a little bit too low right there. Her ear is a middle tone right here. And this can be darker now. This hair is dark here. This still looks off to me, but I'll work on it a little bit more. This is all a middle tone. This is a middle tone. This is a dark. And that part comes right along here, so that's right. Okay, so I went into Photoshop and I grayscaled my image, put it next to hers, and I can see all kinds of problems. They're all pretty small, and they can all be corrected, but I think your first goal is to get a face on there, and then to step back and look at it side by side, like this. So I'm going to begin the process of correcting, and i like for you to see how far I am sometimes from it because our first goal is to get a face on here and it won't be the person we're working on it'll be someone similar and then we begin the correcting every now and then you can draw it beautifully the first time and it's just a fluke and it works out or it's your experience and your your knowledge that makes it work out but um, most of the time corrections are needed so the biggest thing that jumps out at me is her hair is bumping way up, and my little bump up right here where the part is, I have it really all the way out to here. So it's just a little tiny mark right here, and then the head starts to come down right along through here. It's also out of whack here. It's much too wide. This is probably more accurate. This angle comes in like this, and I have it coming up way out, so in and then in again. I can measure from the widest point here to her where her bangs would be and see what it's the same as from the bottom of her nostril to her lash line. Bottom of nostril to lash line. So see, I'm, I'm just a, a thread of the canvas too, too wide there, but that can be corrected. Also, I have this really dark and harsh right here. And it's not, it's soft and round. I have the uh, area where the nostril comes is way over here when it should come right along the fultrum, this little ridge on her upper lip. So I can correct right around in here, around her nose. This is too dark. The, air, the lines around her lashes are too harsh and this lifts up. So I need to correct the angle of that. It's more in, of a downward slope. So I'm just going to do that real quick as you um, watch me make these corrections. Just be encouraged, especially if you have a lot of corrections to make, and see how it, it makes a difference. 
um, even softening up lines that you have too, drawn too harshly will also make a difference. And it will, you can see how quickly things will improve. Um, this is too harsh. So I lost part of my video there for a minute. Um, I wanted to come, come back in here and show you. I just softened. I've got um, a clean brush here that I just use for drawing to get some of the eraser poop off of it. Um, and this is a really harsh uh, sandpaper surface here. So that's a little bit of what I'm fighting. I kind of wish I'd used just paper. I think that's probably what she drew on. And I think it would be a lot softer drawing than this uh, really rough textured sandpaper surface. So again, a child, everything about a child needs to be soft and rounded. Even if you've drawn angularly uh, at the beginning, then it's a good idea to come back in here and I'm going to get the darker pastel here and soften up your harsh lines so that it's not such a um, such bold lines that make her look older and make her look less childlike. Shape of the head was really important. And again, I go back to this little part right here. It's a tiny lift. Then it begins the downward slope. And a, a, a common mistake we make is to make the hair too big or too small. So that's just something to be aware of. Check yourself, check your measurements. See what else coincides. There's another little bit of a lift right there. She's really dark headed, so you want to get that in pretty quick. And I, I misjudged this a little bit, so I can come back in here and look at the, the lines around her chin. You can see there's a melting area right here. Very soft over here. And once you've got the angular drawing lines, then you can come back in here and soften things down. And round them out as you're blending. Instead of having a lot of lines, like in this area, you could go ahead and mask that in so that it's her, the mass of her hair next to her chin instead of an outline on it. If it gets too harsh, just come back in here with an eraser or a blender or whatever to soften those lines out. There is um, some darker value down here on her chin that I don't have. Not much to go on here. There's not a lot of, of value on the face. Oh, one more thing. I always say that, don't I? This angle of her eye is pretty important. And I've taken it off and putting it back on, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it several times to get it right. And I might use charcoal, let's see. Yeah, I wish I'd, again, I wish I'd used charcoal for the whole thing. And you can go ahead and erase out that um, tilt, the, the tilt line across down the middle of the face, because that'll start to distract you. Remember to tap if you're using pastel, it's a lot kinder on the environment instead of blowing the pastel dust. So I think a lot of this is gonna be improved when I put some color on it. Cause it's not, it's not a real, 
I'm not real thrilled with it. But again, that's okay. This is, we're, we're doing this to learn, right? I want to check. Um, this seems a little off to me. So on the original, from the side of her nose to the side of her face is the same as chin to nostril. I have this as a different size now, so it is that wide. So I haven't misjudged it. The more uh, I did learn when we were doing the pastel study this year that on these sanded papers, the more pastel you put on, the easier the surface gets to work with, or gets it gets more the tooth gets filled and it's not so choppy and sandy. So I can see as I'm using this eraser that it's helping to get rid of some of that hard sandpaper-like surface. 